Hi there, it's Rachel Tannenblatt from Music with Mrs. Tannenblatt. I wanted to make a video to show you how I am thinking about lesson planning during online learning. I'm still an online learning newbie, but I wanted to share some of the ways that I have guided my thinking and how I am helping my students by simplifying my instruction so that they can be more successful during this time. I wanted to show you a Google slideshow that I made. I've been sharing a different slideshow for every class. This is grade three, uh, unit one, lesson two. I am fortunate enough that I have units and lessons provided to me by the county where I teach. And so I have a very clear framework. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I like structure and I'm really happy that my county tells me exactly which concepts I should be teaching and when. So this lesson is a lesson on tempo. However, as a Kodai inspired teacher, I also have other things that I want to be working on with my students while I am following that structure and that framework. So this is what I've done to kind of focus in and make sure that my repertoire choices are intentional and make sure that my students are still getting that content that I think is so crucial to follow my Kodai curriculum. So we start with a welcome screen. I have my class norms. We talk about how we can be appropriate in the chat, ways to use our microphone or to mute our microphone as needed, and of course, having an open mind to learn new things. And here's a reminder for them that after class, they're going to be going to Schoology. Schoology is our learning management system, and it's where I host the assessments and assignments that my students are going to complete during online learning. We start each class with a hello song. I believe in having a ritual and having something that is consistent for my students. So we will always do a hello song at the beginning of class. I share that as a separate screen because it's part of our digital curriculum that we have. Then we come back to my slideshow and we look at our warm up activities. This is a third grade class at the beginning of the school year. So they haven't learned Takatiki yet. So our rhythms are reviewing from last year. I've got half notes and I've got tied quarter notes and eighth notes. Um, if I were live in the classroom teaching an in-person lesson, then during my warm-ups, I would be busting out all the bells and whistles. I would have a separate slideshow for each thing. I would have music playing in the background and I would be going all out jazz hands. But I've decided that for online learning, it's more important to center in and focus. And it's more important for my students to see me and to see each other in our Google Meet session. So I'm just sharing these four tiles with different rhythms on them. And we can practice reading them and saying them. We could play them on found sound instruments that they have in their house. Or we could do a little game. You know, I could read a rhythm and then they can type in the chat which one it was. Was it A, B, C, or D? And then we can do similar things with melody. They can echo patterns after me. We could do the poison pitch where I have to make up a phrase, but not use one of the pitches and that kind of thing. Then we're going to dive into content. Now this is a tempo lesson. That is what is being assessed. And that is part of the framework from my county. However, as a Kodai inspired teacher, at this point in the school year, I'm also prepping other concepts. And so I want my students to be preparing 16th notes, which is why I chose the song Tidio because Tidio has a very clear 16th note pattern in it. So I didn't show the notation because I don't want them reading 16th notes yet. So I'd have the lyrics to the song on the screen and I pre-recorded a video of myself teaching the body percussion pattern that I want them to do. So when we're in our live session together, all I have to do is click play and they can watch along and it gives me a vocal break gives me a chance to take attendance if I haven't done that yet and kind of check in on the students while they watch the video. This is the body percussion for the song Tidio. Now we're going to do it at a little bit of a faster tempo. Tidio. So they can go through and watch that. I've also uploaded it onto their Schoology platform so that they can rewatch that particular video segment at their own pace and they can practice the body percussion more. Next, I dive into the content for the lesson and we're talking about tempo. Those are some images that I pulled off of Google, nothing that I created myself. Uh, I've got all the Italian terminology there that they're going to be assessed on later. 
And then I like the idea of having them say their name because usually that's something students are comfortable doing in a Google Meet session. Um, at the beginning of the year, I have not been as successful having students that want to like sing out and do solos on camera in front of everybody, but they're more willing to do this type of thing where they're saying their name. And so they can say their name presto or say their name Largo. And we're getting more practice muting and unmuting ourselves. And we're getting practice using the tempo terms that they need to know. At this point, we would take a brain activator. I call it a brain activator and not a brain break because we know that movement activates our brain for further learning. It's not a break from the learning. It's an important part of our music lesson. So when I put on a go noodle and share that with them, they're getting up and moving around and they'll be ready to do the next part. I'm actually going to present, I wanna show you this part in real time. So after they take their brain activation break, then we will be doing tempo practice. And so I'm using that same song again so that I'm getting the most bang for my buck. And they're singing Tidio, but then I animated my slides so that they can try different tempi. So first we'll sing it Andante, then we'll sing it Largo, and then we'll sing it Presto, everybody's favorite. And so by now they've sung the song a lot, so they're getting it in their ears, they're getting used to the 16th notes, even though they don't know that's what it is yet, but they're also practicing the tempo language that they need to know for this unit. Then the final thing that we do is I send them over to Schoology because every week I have some type of assignment for them to turn in. For this lesson, it's a choice board where they can either sing a song with a different tempo or they can perform a poem at a different tempo. And it shows that they know the language and it helps them to demonstrate their learning. I also put a copy of the slideshow right there on their Schoology page so that that way they can click through and if they wanna rewatch the videos or if they need to refer back and look at the chart with the different names of the Italian tempo terms, then they have it all right there for them. But I've kept it simplified for me because it's the same slideshow, the same thing I presented, is exactly what they're going to see when they go on Schoology and do it on their own. And I've simplified my repertoire choices because it's just the one song in this lesson, plus their hello song and their brain activation in the middle. I'm hoping that this will help me to be consistent with my Could I Inspired teaching, but also being able to follow the framework that was provided to me by my county. I would love to talk to you more about how you're planning your lessons during online learning, so feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye for now.